Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise God. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord here this morning, say good amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for this day. For this is the day that you have made, and we are rejoicing in it. Thank you once again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you once again. For the privilege. Ah, for the privilege to come into your house and the honor to gather together once again and to be able to lift up your glorious and awesome name, to bless your holy name, your awesome name, to say thank you once again, to say thank you once again for your goodness for your mercy, for your amazing grace in our lives, for your faithfulness. When we were not faithful, you remain faithful. Oh, we are thankful people here this morning. Thank you for the privilege to be able to come in this place once again and to bless your holy name in this place. Come on now, lift up your hands and start to bless his name in this place. Start to thank him for what he's done in your life. Start to thank him for the cross. Start to thank him for, come on now, for the turnaround, for the breakthrough, for your miracle, for the restoration in your family. Ah, come on, somebody. What a God, what a Savior. What a God, what a Savior. Spirit, have your way in this place. Your will to be done in this place. Your name to be glorified. You know every heart, every need, every situation. We surrender this service over to you. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name in this place. Come on now. Start to thank the Lord in your own words right now. Come on. For what he's done. Start to thank him for the cross. For his mercies that are new every morning. For his mercies that are new every morning. Oh, hallelujah. 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 He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be lifted up. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for your presence. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for another day to praise your name. Thank you for another day to be able to share the gospel to somebody. Ah, uh, thank you for the privilege and the honor and the opportunity to shine for you and to bless somebody and to encourage somebody and hallelujah hallelujah I said hallelujah Savior. I said, 
what a God, what a Savior. Hallelujah. If you're going to shout, if you're going to celebrate, this is a good time. We're not victims, but we're victors through Christ Jesus. I said we're not victims, but we're victors through Christ Jesus. And we can do all things, not some things. Watch me now. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. It all means all. Everything's going to be all right. If you've got Jesus, everything's going to be all right. He's undefeated. I said he's undefeated. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Somebody shout. says you shall see my glory if you believe that I can God says if you believe that I can watch me now God says I will shout I believe all things are possible your situation might be here this morning. The God I serve is a mountain removing God. The God I serve is a God that makes the crooked places straight. Same God that opened up the Red Sea for the Israelites to march across, swallowed up the Egyptians and the enemy, amen. Same God that's here today. Same one that was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire furnace. I said the same one that was with Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego and brought them on the other side without being touched and then promotion, same God here right now. Same, one with, same God that was with Daniel in the lines then that took the line and made it into a nice little pillow for, for Daniel to sleep by, amen? Brought him on the other side. What the enemy meant for evil and destruction, God turned it around and brought a promotion for Daniel. I'm saying something here today. God is trying to say something to you. You might be going through something right now. You might be going through a fiery furnace. You might be going through a lion's den experience, amen. But if you keep on trusting in him and you keep on believing in him, not looking to the left, not looking to the right, not pulling away, but keep on trusting in him. Keep on lifting up his name. I'm here to tell you God's about to bring you out on the other side. God's about to pull you out pull you out and pull you up I said God's about to bring you through this thing pull you out and about to pull you up increase is about to hit you promotions about to hit you on the other side of this trial on the other side of this tribulation on the other side of this thing that you're going through promotions about to hit your house amen if you do not grow weary in doing good God says in due season you shall reap a harvest amen Shout I believe, shout I believe, shout I believe.
hearts that came to the kingdom and the souls that were saved last night. Thank you for trusting us with this. Thank you for trusting us, Lord, in this place, with this platform. And we give you all the glory and all the honor for the increase last night. Thank you for the provision to be able to meet all the needs and physically and spiritually last night. Praise the Lord. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord here this morning. You may be seated here in the presence of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. How about this weather? Isn't this weather awesome? Amen. Amen. Great if we had like once a week every month like this, eh? Especially like in in June or July, amen. And May. And August. September wouldn't be bad either, amen. Just wait a couple days, amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, I want to say thank you to everybody once again for your faithfulness um, here in this ministry and just. Um, last night, once again, you know, just it was great to just see the results of last night um, of all the people that came forward. It was just it was, it was priceless again last night, and I never want to get used to it. That's why I'm not saying it's just oh, like just. But I mean, I I I I want to. 
I stop and do this during the service also because we can't get comfortable and get used to what God's doing in this place. And and um, and what a what a what a what a what an awesome um, um, altar call last night. And just and um, but then that wouldn't have happened if you know um, again if people didn't step up, people didn't give, people remember the food, the the the, the turkeys, the 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 you know besides some that were donated people sold financially so so we can go get all that food and to be able to um, do all that um, so and then the outreach that morning also um, many faces and there's people here today from that Saturday morning out there here again today I saw them this morning and um, uh, I know there's a, uh, a mother here I, forget, I don't know where our sister's name is but I know her kids are over um, they just got checked into the children's ministry this morning and um, so so but but all working together to see these results amen and that really is what it's all about, and um, and um, and and that's why God is blessing um, this church because we are keeping the thing the thing, and and it does um, demand commitment. It does command um, um, sacrifice. Amen. Anything worthwhile, anything that's going to last. Amen. This is the one thing that people have to understand today in America. This is where we're coming up short. Amen. And because uh, um, we live in a microwave society, we want it now. We want it now. But the thing is, amen, how many people realize that when you put something in the microwave, it's not the same when you prepare it and put it in the oven. No, 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 see, 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 see. Amen. It, it, it's not the same. You know, I, 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 I got some asparagus, you know, because I'm trying to eat healthy once in a while. Amen. Praise God. Is, is that health? That's a healthy, right? Asparagus. Asparagus. And, um, and it, 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 you know, it, it, it had a thing where, you know, when you go to the store, it says you can just put that thing in the microwave and it gets, but it's not the same when you put it in, 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 in and put it in, the, you know, in, in, in the water and, and let it simmer a little bit and then, and then put a little, a little olive oil afterwards with some salt. Anyway, praise God. Amen. Touch of lemon. But the point I'm trying to make is uh, uh, it tastes, at least personally, I believe it tastes a lot better through the oven or, you know, uh, uh, than the microwave. And then, and then it might take a little bit longer, uh, but, but, but in the end, it's a lot better. And today in our society, we have a microwave mentality, and that's where we're coming up short, that things don't last. Things don't things don't last and 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 eventually that they're they're here today gone tomorrow we don't want to be here today gone tomorrow we want this thing to last to grow and to keep moving forward for something to continue to grow and to move forward and to increase sacrifice and commitment is demanded it is required it is part of the process it is, it is part of the process of greatness. Greatness. To do something great. To do something great for God. It must be, it must be accompanied by sacrifice and commitment. I'm going to say that again. Greatness has to have next to it. If you want to accomplish greatness... Because God hasn't called us to do average. God hasn't called us to just squeak by. But to do great. Because the great one lives in us. Ex excellence lives in us. But to accomplish that as a people and as a church, next to greatness is commitment and sacrifice. <laughs> I said commitment and sacrifice. Commitment, sacrifice. Amen. And, um, and one of the reasons that God is doing what he's doing in this place is because there is commitment and there is sacrifice at crazy levels in this place. And great is your reward. Amen. And I just saw last night at these altars. I'm like, wow, because it took... Uh, and not just, you know, uh, uh, it took many parts of this church working together to get the result. And people praying at home. Amen. And then I'm looking around today and just the breakfast. Oh, man, how about the breakfast again this morning? I mean, just, it's just. And then I think of the bus ministry and the children. I went over to, to, to just walk around the children's ministry and all the faithful teachers. I mean, I'm telling you, I mean, just, I mean, ridiculous. 
teaching the kids. I walked in there, and, and they hadn't even said they were just still, the kids were still coming in, and the teachers were already starting to teach and to pour into the children, pouring into our children, amen? And I'm sitting here going, this is, this is unbelievable. And then this weekend, um, acquire the fire of the teenagers, amen? I mean, everyone, that's, all, the, all the teenagers are coming in, and it's just, you know, testimony. They're all fired up, and praise the Lord. And so while that was going on last night and on and, and Friday, uh, um, you know, as far as they were at the choir, the fire, like how many, about 45, 45 teenagers, amen. And, um, and, and then here, so there, the, the God was moving there and impacting their lives and, you know, and then here people in this church and it was, you know, you know, outreach and this and salvation. I mean, just praise the Lord, amen. To God be the glory. Amen. But we can't slow up. We can't pull back. We're, 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 we're much is given, much is required. And if we want to continue to see these great results and lives being impacted the way they are, we need to keep pushing forward and keep pressing in, keep praying, keep um, committing, and, um, and, and, and keep um, manning our position that God's called us to. Amen? Uh, um, because this is what it's all about. So I just want to say God bless every one of you. Amen? Because... Um, there wouldn't be altar calls like this if it wasn't for everybody working together for the glory of God. Amen? So, praise God. Amen? Well, so, uh, let's see here. Um, let's do this. A uh, couple announcements, and then we'll move quickly. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish what I started last week, and um, I, I, I was talking, what can we bring to Jesus? Remember that? Amen? To touch his heart, and we're talking, um, one of the things that, you know, this Thanksgiving and Christmas, you know, what can we bring to the one that died for us what can we bring to the one that saved us and turned our lives around amen and um, we talked about um, um, one thing uh, is to keep the thing the thing you know the hurting the poor the afflicted the addicted and lost and when we're about the people and and it's about you know reaching the hurting the lost amen and 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 and, and sacrificing and helping others and putting others first amen that touch touches the heart of God amen and um, but I just want to go a little further today just for a few minutes here in, in, in a bit and, and I started on, and I, I just feel the Spirit of God leading me back to this topic. Another thing that we can bring as a present to the Lord that will touch his heart is our willingness to forgive one another. Because it was Jesus on the cross that said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Amen? So I believe when we are willing to forgive one another, <laughs> that touches his heart. Amen. And then, I, and if we have just a little more time before we dismiss this morning, what I, I, I think there's one more thing we can bring this holiday season to the Lord that would bless him and touch his heart. And you know what that is? That's, I'm glad you asked. Um, besides keeping the thing the thing, that's a big one. That's a big present. I know that touches his heart. Amen. It's about the people. Amen. Because he came to find that which was lost. Number two, forgiving one another. Being merciful to one another. Amen. Even when you're right forgiving that person that hurt us amen because even when we're right it doesn't make us right and then also also watch this now you know what else can really 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 touches his heart this especially during these holidays as we're like it's a time of giving what can we what can we give him uh, our obedience If you love me, you'll obey me. Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. When we obey his word, when we put action to our faith, that touches the heart of our Lord and Savior. We are saying to him that we are thankful for what he's done in our lives and we want to please him. We want to we wanna please him for what he's done in our lives. And we don't obey his word because we have to obey his word. But we obey his word because we are thankful for what he's done in our lives. Lord, thank you for what you've done in my life. So, Lord... It is a pleasure. It is, it is, it is, it is, it, I, with, with, a, with great joy, I look forward to picking up your word and doing your word because of what you've done in my life. 
I look forward to waking up in the morning, picking up your word, not just reading your word, not just talking with your word, but reading and, and, and meditating on it and then picking it up and then putting some feet to it. Hallelujah. Oh, that touches his heart. Could someone say amen? Because eventually, watch this, if you truly, truly, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm feeling this thing right now. Go to James. Go to James real quick. And I was going to talk about forgiveness, but let's just talk about obedience right now. Because that's <laughs> just real quick, just real quick, just from James. 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 Just uh, James chapter uh, 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 chapter James chapter one, starting in um. Verse 19, James chapter. Okay, James chapter 1, verse 19. And let me just, let me just, let me just, because I was going to do this later, but let me just, just stay right where you're at. Let me just give our foundational uh, text from last week. St. Luke, you don't have to turn there. Chapter 17, starting in verse 11. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into the village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Amen. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back. He came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked them, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were there, not all, there were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was not one found to return and give praise? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and, and go. Your faith has made you well. Ten were healed, the Bible tells, but only one came back. Amen. Here we are some 2,000 years later, and we're still reading this story. Amen. We're still reading this story, praise the Lord. So we know that that one that returned touched the heart of Jesus. What did he bring? What did he bring? What did he bring to the Lord? What did he bring? He brought, his, he brought a gift of thanksgiving. Amen. And that was what he, when he returned, he brought his thanksgiving, his, his, his thanksgiving to say, thank you for what you have done in my life. If it wasn't for you, I would still be in the condition I was prior. But because of you, my life has been changed. I am healed. I am restored. Things are not the same. Uh, the, the, things have changed. And, and the reason they have changed is because, because of you, Jesus. Amen. So when he went to the Lord with a heart of thanksgiving, he brought, uh, 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 he touched the heart. He touched the heart of the master he touched the heart uh, of the king of kings and the lord of lords his thanksgiving touched his heart and we said last week what can we do these holiday season when we talk about thanksgiving we talk about christmas and, and by the way um christmas is not about gift giving it is about jesus amen it, it, uh, let's get that straight, amen. But we understand, though, in our world today, we connect Christmas, we connect Thanksgiving as a time of giving and blessing and giving gifts to one another. So, so what can we? And we, we said last week, we, we, we were always like, we always come to church and we always have a need and we always have a list and we're like, well, Lord, you know, can I get an amen, amen? But, but, but what can we do during this season, this stretch, amen? And really, we shouldn't just do it during this stretch. This should be something that we should start to practice every single, yeah, amen. So, 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 but, but just because it's the holidays, amen. So, so what can we do? To, what can we give? What can we, what can we bring to the master, amen? This leper that was cleansed, that was healed, brought his thanksgiving. And we said one of the things that, that I believe with all my heart that would touch his heart, because we know this touched his heart. 
part because we're still reading it some 2,000 years later. This story is recorded in, in, in the Bible here because obviously it touched the heart of the Lord. Now we know also it's in there because it lets us know that he is a healing God, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. This also is here because there's another revelation here that the one leper that came back also realized and recognized now how he received his miracle. The other nine did not because Jesus says, your faith, your faith. So now he knows that his faith is what made him well. So there's many reasons why we're reading this right now, and that here it is 2,000 years ago. But what I'm saying right now is, but definitely I believe without a doubt yeah, that, that one of the reasons is because it, it impacted the master's heart because, because he's, he came back to say thank you. Now, when he did come back to say thank you, yes, his faith. So that let him know, wow, that my faith is what made me what? My faith, my faith, my faith, which means if my faith worked here, it'll work later on again. See, the other nine did not get that revelation because they never came back. See, when you go back with a heart of thanksgiving, let me just throw this in here. And I wasn't even going to go there, but I mean, but this thing, since it is Thanksgiving, this coming up week, amen. When you have a heart of thanksgiving, watch this, your thanksgiving will take you to a place of revelation. Woo! Your thanksgiving, a heart of thanksgiving, even though you're not looking for revelation, you just want to say thank you for what he's done in your life. You just want to say thank you for his mercy. You just want to say thank you for his amazing grace. You just want to say thank you that once I was on my way to hell and now I'm on my way to heaven. I just want to say thank you. But your thanksgiving will pull you and push you and propel you into a place of revelation in his word. His thanksgiving brought revelation of how he was made well. Your faith, without faith it's impossible to please him. Your faith. So now he knows a month down the road, a year down the road, the next time he has to face a giant or a situation in his life, he knows it was his faith. That moved the hand of God back here. And if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And my faith released the hands of God to make me well back here. That means that my faith over here, a year down the road, five years down the road, will release the hands of God to flex his muscle on my behalf. Amen. But that's not what we're going to talk about right now. So we read and we know he touched the heart. He touched the, he touched the heart of God, and that's what he brought his thanksgiving. And his thanksgiving touched his heart. And we said last week that when we keep the thing the thing, that we touch the heart of God. When, when, when it's about, you know, helping the, the hurting, the addicted, afflicted, the lost, the poor, you know, when we sacrifice and we give. And, 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 and we went a little further with the scriptures. And it's crazy because, you know, we, we, and when we do this, we're, it, it, we touch his heart. And we're trying to touch his heart because we're trying to bring something to God. But even when we're doing all that, God still at the end has the final say and still blesses us at the end. And we're not even looking for a blessing, but it's impossible because his nature is a blessing nature, amen? So here we are trying to help, trying to give, but the Bible says when you do give, amen, you're littering when you're helping someone, when you're helping somebody, when you're helping the poor, when you're reaching out to somebody uh, outside of yourself, that you're touching his heart, that you're actually doing it unto the Lord. And when you do that, the Bible says in the scriptures, get the thing, go to the YouTube, watch the service now. I don't have time to go through the whole thing right now, Amen. But, what is, but the scriptures were telling us in the end there's a reward that comes back to us. Even though we're not looking for the reward, we're not because we're, we're talking about just wanting to touch his heart. We want to bring something to him. We don't want anything. There's no, Lord, I'm not looking for anything. I'm not looking for you to bless. I'm not looking for you. But God says, I, I, I get that, and I thank you, and you've touched my heart. But it is my nature, so i got to bless you. Amen. And he looks and he's like, I can't let this out. I can't these little, uh, little, let these little rascals. Amen. <laughs> it touched my heart like this, and, 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 and I bless him. Amen. So one of the ways is, okay, we know, we know that, that when, we, when we keep the thing, the thing, when we keep the thing, the thing, when we keep it about the people, when we keep it about the hurt, the poor, the afflicted, the addicted, and the lost, praise God, that touches his heart. But also, but also our obedience. What can we bring to our obedience? James chapter 1, verse 19. I'm reading out of the NIV here today. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen. 
slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely, <laughs> do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Look at the plate. Do what it says. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But that man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. Isn't it interesting? Again, we're trying to touch his heart to bring him our obedience, and in the end, we get blessed. <laughs> now, 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 watch this. Now, watch this. Go, go to chapter 2, verse 14. Obedience. The Bible says it's better than sacrifice. Now what's this? Oh, James says here. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Ah. Suppose he brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? My God. In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. You believe there is one God, good. Now watch this. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish man. Oh, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our answer? ancestor Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar you see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did and he by what he did and the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is justified by what he does and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction? As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds, without action, is dead. We're saved by faith. You are not saved. You can't earn salvation. All salvation, we can't earn it. There's nothing we can do. It is a gift from God. All we can do is say thank you. But if we are truly born again, I'm going to mess us up now. Eventually, in your born again experience, not that you're not going to have moments, not that we're not going to sin. Because the Bible lets us know this in John also. First John, he says, my dear children, 
Not that you should sin, but if you do, which lets us know again that he's addressing not the world, but the church, which lets us know that we have our moments even in church. And there's mercy and grace. A righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. But here it is, though. But if you are truly born again, it'll start to produce obedience. You can't live in that sin and stay there forever. Because if you're born again, you can't get comfortable and be okay with it. Eventually, it'll start to produce your, 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 your salvation will eventually start to produce obedience. So to say I believe in God, to say praise the Lord and God knows me and we're good and I pray the prayer of sin so I'm covered and, and we're living like the devil and we're not trying to change from that condition, faith without works Look at your neighbor and say, that's what the Bible says. Obedience. O obedience. Reason why many today in the church today are stuck, struggling. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. The reason why we get stuck. And we are in the condition that we're in. We're good about knowing the songs. We're good at memorizing the scriptures. Hear me this morning. But we're very low on doing what it says. When it gets a little uncomfortable, when it doesn't feel good, when it demands sacrifice, when it demands some change, when it demands a little bit of humbleness, amen. When it demands, watch this word, a little bit of submission. We start to pull away and then we start to say, well, praise the Lord. And God understands and, you know, and we start to pick and choose our spots of obedience. And the reason why we're stuck is because God is not mocked. After a while... Faith without works is dead. Amen? His word is not up for debate. His word is not up for vote. I'm going to say that again. His word is not up for debate. The holy word of God, the living word of God that is sharper than two edged, a two edged sword is not up for a vote. To pick and choose, praise the Lord. God knows what he's doing. And let me say it like this too. He's not trying to hurt us. He's trying to help us. He's not trying to take from us. He's trying to protect us, amen. But we have to come to a place, and it is about that time that God, and the word of the Lord came to us on Tuesday through the man of God, that it's time we're talking too much, but we're not doing what we're talking, amen. I'm going to say that again. We are talking a good game, but we're not doing what we're saying. Amen? We're talking behind the pulpits. We're talking this. We're talking about change. We're talking about doing this. We're talking about doing that. We're talking about reaching this. We're talking about reaching the, the city. But you know what? And then we leave the church, and then we go right back to Monday through Friday, and then we come up, we come back to church, put on the, put on the ties, put on our suit, put on our dress, put, put on our clap, put on our shout, put on our little jump, put on a little turn, praise the Lord, and then we shout and we holler, praise the Lord. It's about the hurting. It's about, it's about giving. It's about sacrifice. It's about commitment. Let's do it. Let's do it. And then Monday. Day, we're right back to doing the same thing. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, uh. we talk about forgiving one another. We talk about not murmuring. We talk about not complaining. We talk about loving our enemies. We talk. <laughs> We talk about sacrifice. We talk about helping others. We talk about putting others in front of us. We talk about giving. We, 
then right back to Monday through Friday, it, it, it's all about us again. It becomes all about us again. All we're doing is just religion then. Because relationship produces obedience. Religion is mechanical. Religion is to make us feel better. I put in my punch in my card, punch out, sang three songs. God saw it. Praise the Lord. Should get me into heaven. Everything's all right. Now I can go to Las Vegas, play some. What? You, I, come to church, lift up his name. And tell me that it's okay by God, the one that shed his blood on the cross for you and me to go to Vegas while I'm going to be a witness. The devil is a liar, amen. What, what, what planet are you from, amen? I'm going to talk to you straight up because this needs to be said. Because it's this time. God is trying to get a hold of us. Amen. God wants to take us to, to another level. He's coming. Watch this. Watch it. God loves us. Yes. It's not the way you start. It's the way. You, yes. His grace and his mercy. This is grace. This is mercy. Amen. What I'm saying here today is the love of God. But he's coming for a holy church. Bible says come as you are, but don't stay as you are. It's time that we get to a place now. Come as you are. And trust me, we fought. We have more. I, I'm speaking to myself. I've had, after I've been said, there's been time after time. But, and if it wasn't for his grace, praise the Lord. Thank God for his grace. But, let, let's, but we need to get to a place where we say, okay, you know what? I, I, but but that, you know, that was five years. That was, I mean, wait a second. I should be a little further along in this thing. Amen? Somewhere, I should be a little further along in this thing. If I was saved ten years ago. And, 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 and I'm still going to Vegas playing blackjack, playing craps, and it's 10 years later, something's wrong. I said something is wrong. Faith without works. What's wrong with taking money that it's my money? No, it's it's what? Whose money is it? It's your money, and you're taking the money that God has blessed you with, and you're the same one that comes here complaining about your finances. And you're taking what you say is your money, which is not your money. It's God's money. And then you put it on a table to play it by chance. And then you're in your mind, in, 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 your, in, your, in, your, in your, well, if I win, I'm going to give 10% to the kingdom. Amen. You're going to gamble. When God has given us instructions on how to get increase in our finances through his word. And he tells us when you give, when you tithe, when you give offerings, I will bless you. I will, de I will, I will devour the enemy. I will bring it. I will open up the heavens for you. I will bring increase. Given it shall be given. And you're going to go to Vegas. You're going to go to the lotto machine. Yeah, you know, you know what's funny is we're laughing at it. But you know what? But you know what? That's what's happened today in America. I got stirred up on Tuesday night because you know what? We don't hear preaching like that we heard from that man of God. Amen. Because what he said was right in the money. 
And when he opened up Isaiah chapter 1, that really messed me up. It's time to wake up. There's a time coming that God's going to judge this thing. But we're under grace and he's waiting and he's giving us opportunities to get this thing right. But that society we live in, we take a couple dollars where we can take those couple dollars and give it to the church or give it to somebody and be a blessing and we're going to gamble it and take a chance on a lottery. It's only a couple dollars, right, but, it's, but a couple dollars to somebody else, that's a lot. Ask those kids in India what a couple dollars mean. Are we all right? But that's the society we live in, microwave society. What can I get quick? Because we're a lazy society. I said, I said, we are a lazy society. I don't know what was said, but I'm sure it was good. Amen. Because I don't know what I'm saying is right on the money here. What can we bring, God? Our obedience. I love you, God. Well, if we really love him, we'll do what he says. I don't know why I'm talking about this Vegas thing. It's just, hit, it's just sticking to my spirit right now. But you understand what I'm saying. But you know what? But, it's, but, it, but it, I'll hear that sometimes. And I'm like, hey, praise the Lord. I used to gamble. I used to gamble a lot. So watch this now. But don't tell me that it's okay to go to Vegas and hang out in that atmosphere and gamble your money in that atmosphere and tell me Jesus is okay with that? You're being deceived. You're being deceived. He's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle, without blemish. We always say, come as you are. But don't stay like that. Resurrection power, amen? We should be growing. We should be maturing. We should be growing in our faith and maturing in our faith, amen? Come on now, amen? I'm trying to help somebody push forward and wake up and understand that God is watching us. But we're walking in the churches today and we're preaching it and we're talking it, but we're not doing what we're talking. And it's time to start doing what we're talking. I've said this many times. How many times are we going to talk about, you know, not talking about one another, not gossiping about one another? And then it continues and it's the same thing. And, we're, and it's kind of like we just become used to it. We've come, we become, it just becomes part of the, 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 the you know, uh, just, it's it, it, it just part of the. But, we, but we, we need to hear it every month or every other month, right? You know, pray, that was great. Yeah, yeah, I got to watch my life. And, and the same ones that have the issue are the, oh, praise the Lord, Pastor. Yeah. <laughs> Do something about it, amen? Don't come to me and tell me I'm the best pastor and I'm this and I'm that, you know, and then you go talk about me. Do something about it, amen? You don't understand why you're in your mess that you're in? You're talking about the man of God. You're talking about the people of God. And you think God's going to bless you when you have that kind of mouth on you, that kind of tongue on you? That's the kind of filth that comes out of your mouth? Are you serious? Are you serious? What church are you, what Bible are you reading? Bible, 
Go get that right first and then come and bring your offering. Then come to the altar. Shout amen. amen. Seriously. You all right? Yeah. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying, though, we got to be willing to do it his way, though. Because I said, like, like, when you said, I surrender to you, that means I give you my life. I'm not my own anymore. I'm under your authority and your word. We lift up our hand. Well, if we're, if we're all his, then we're doing it his way. So you can't say, hallelujah, I'm all yours, and still be unforgiving to one another. You can't say, means what does the police officer stick them up and you surrender to the badge to that authority and to that system oh I'm saying something when you're busted and the cops pull you over they're not quite they're not they're not thinking you've done they know you've done something wrong and they're looking for you and they found you the light can I get a witness I know you know who I'm talking about, amen. Don't be looking at me like this, amen. I know. I know we can identify with this in here, amen. Thank God it's not the way you start. It's the way. Don't forget that as I'm saying all this, amen. The lights go out. They don't come to your door, knock on the door and say, registration and license. No. They don't even come up there. The microphone will go off and say, step out of your car. By the way, that's not a suggestion, that's a command. God says obedience is better than sacrifice. It's not a suggestion. Step out of your car. Put your hands up. And turn around. At that point, <laughs> you're not your own anymore. You're busted. You're surrendering to the authority of that badge, of that city. That state, and if it's federal, the country, <laughs> depending on your situation. All that authority, you're surrendering to hands up, turn around, <laughs> to the badge. What do you think the cop's going to say? By then, there's probably about four or five cops there because they've been looking for you because you've broken the law. Haven't we all broken For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. God, I'm saying something now. Mr. Officer, can you hold on a second? I know there's a couple warrants out for me. I know I had a pound of cocaine in my car. I know you've been looking for me. But I got to go take care of this real quick. And then I'll be back to do what we got to do here. Amen. Mr. Officer, I know that, I know you know what's going on here, but you know what? I have an appointment right now. I just need 30 minutes, and how about we synchronize our watches, and I'll come back and meet you here in about 30 minutes. How dumb does that sound? Not going to happen. That's complete surrender, and you're surrendering to that authority and to the whole system of that authority. Doing it their way from that point on. We've all broken the law. We've all sinned. So when we said yes to him to forgive us of our sins, at that point, what do we say? Lord, I'm 
a sinner. I need a Savior. And I am surrendering to your, your system, your way. And you know what we do? We come in, and then the word goes forth. It talks about forgiveness. It talks about giving. It talks about sacrifice. It talks about commitment. Oh, okay, God. Oh, I'm, oh, can you hold on a second? I, I, I'll be back to that. Can we talk about the unforgiveness thing? I'll be back, and, and we'll, we'll do that, like, next month. Amen? That's what we're doing. We're picking and choosing when we're not our own anymore. And if we're truly not our own anymore, we're not debating this. You're true. Listen, the confirmation that you're his eventually, eventually, I know sometimes we go through seasons, so please, I, I, this is not condemnation. I'm trying to help somebody that, that, to not say it's okay anymore. It's not okay. Eventually, it must start to produce if you truly are. Does that make sense? Our best days are ahead, yes. And God does want to bless us. But he blesses obedience. He doesn't bless gossipers. He blesses obedience. He doesn't bless gamblers. Man, you guys are looking at me. Come on now. Why are you looking at me like that? Amen. Come out from among them and be ye separate. We're in this world, the Bible says, but we're not of the world. And it's about time because I know in this church God wants to take us higher and further. But if we're going to go higher and further, amen. Our obedience needs to go to another level. Come on now. I'm speaking to myself. Hey, I'm speaking. Listen, I'm speaking. But our obedience needs to go to another level. Our sacrifice needs to go to another level. Our commitment needs to go to another level. Because watch it. When Jesus was coming to the fulfillment, to the end of fulfilling his destiny, his assignment to the cross, amen, it didn't become easier. There was more... <laughs> More sacrifice was demanded and required as he got closer to the cross. He had less friends when he was coming closer to fulfilling. And before the resurrection, you can't have a resurrection without a cross. But how are we going to have a cross if we're not going to have a garden experience? Do you see the process? The closer you get to the greatness that God's called you and me to. When God wants to increase and do something even greater, there has to be a cross. And the closer you get to that cross every time, <laughs> it demands more commitment, more sacrifice, more obedience to have the resurrection, to have the increase. So we can't keep on living in the garden. The garden was okay for a season to get us here. But if we're going to go the rest of the way, we've got to get up from the garden. And the garden wasn't easy and it wasn't comfortable. But as Jesus, if we follow in his footsteps, said, Oh, if this cup could be taken from me, but not my will, but your will to be done. At that point, when he surrendered once again and said, Okay. It's not about, this is about pleasing the, 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 the Father and, and, and why I'm here. And it's about the uh, a world in need. And, and I need to go to the cross. Not my will, but your will. And then he gets back up and he moves forward. And the closer he got to the cross, the less popular he got. The other problem we have in church is huh, we have a problem because we all want everybody to like us. But if you're going to be effective for God, not everybody's going to like you. You're not going to be the most popular. Now listen, now they should not like you because you're being weird, though. If you're being weird, that's a problem. But when you're doing it the right way for the glory of God, amen, you're not going to be the most popular person. They're going to love you, and they're going to want to kill you. 
You should hear some of these cologne calls that we get. You should read some of the emails that come in. Man, you are the greatest preacher. You're the greatest pastor. You're the greatest evangelist. And then they let me know some other things also. That lets, man, this, he must be, is he on crack? Is he on high? He, what's that guy doing? Has he been smoking pot or crack or something? Amen. No, I've been smoking Jesus. Amen. That's all. I just been, I just took another hit of God. Amen. I took another hit of Jesus, praise the Lord, amen. I, I, yeah, I am high. I am messed up, amen. I'm messed up on him, praise the Lord. Greatest thing that ever happened, praise the Lord. Greatest high you can have, amen. No hangover in the end also. And that high can last and it can continue to increase, amen. Greater high than any pipe that you can smoke, any, ah, you're not in this place. any pill you can pop, praise the Lord. Pick up the word of God, call upon his name, and cry out to him and say, Lord, fill me up. Lord, stir me up. Lord, fill me with your fire. And watch what God will do, amen. You'll get a little crazy for him, amen. You'll step out and separate from the rest of the world, praise the Lord. And then you get addicted to it. wanted to, they loved him, and they wanted to kill him. One minute they're saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. The next minute, same people, crucify him. Read your Bible. Hosanna, Hosanna. Next minute, crucify him. get delivered from what people have to say. If we're going to fulfill our assignment and reach a world that needs him, I stay focused on him, keep the thing the thing, and do his word. And understand it's going to cost us something. And it's, we're way too comfortable today in the church. And that is a problem. Yes. I'm going to say the church is too comfortable and it's asleep because it is too comfortable. It's been so comfortable for so long that now it is asleep. And this kind of preaching is rebuked and pushed away. Today, this kind of preaching, oh, that's that's condemnation. That's the little that's the old testament. That's this, that's that. What? We just read out of the New Testament. James says, faith without works is who's he speaking to? Do you want to read what Jesus said? You want to break down some words of Jesus? You know who talked about hell a lot? You know who it was? Who? Jesus. Read your Bible. To some people would say, you know what, we don't need that hell. You know, we just talk about, wait a second, do you know who talked about hell? Jesus. How do we not take time? I, I mean, I'm all about talking about everything. You know that, praise the Lord. Shock, praise the Lord, victory, yeah, increase finance, breakthrough, increase, best days, are absolutely. But there is a hell too. And, and people need to know about it also. And some people, yeah, will get saved from a certain message coming from this direction, but some need to hear about hell so they can get the hell taken out of them. Some need to hear it like that. That, hey, if you don't get it right, there is a real place, and it's eternal, and it's forever, and it's called hell, apart from God, and it's real. And sometimes it needs to be said like that. Like for me, I need to hear it like that sometimes because I'm the type of person that needs to be hit over the head a few times. Can I get a witness? Amen. What can we bring God this holiday season? Our obedience. James is talking about Abraham's obedience in Genesis chapter 22 with his son. Sacrifice your son. Think about that one. God is speaking here today. 
Watch this. Just go to Gen G James G Gen Genesis chapter 22 real quick. I guess we're not going to get to the forgiveness part of it. I jumped to the obedience part of it. But I know when God is trying to get something across. See, we're trying, we're coming to church asking for this, trying to get victory here. But God says, until you get this right, it doesn't. If, until you get the obvious right. Watch this real quick. Watch this. Genesis chapter 22. This is what, what we just, this was Abraham's faith. Watch this. His obedience. Verse 1. Some, Genesis chapter 22 verse 1. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am. He replied, then God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains and I, th that I will tell you about. Watch this, verse 3. Watch this. God, are you sure? What do you mean? Did I hear this right? What does the Bible say? Early the next morning, Abraham got up. Did not debate with God. Did not question God. God spoke. Immediate obedience. Got up. Read the word. Did it. Went to church. Heard the word. Did it. Abraham got up, settled his donkey. He took with him. Two of his servants and his son Isaac, when he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him. A little further down, verse 8, Abraham answered, God himself would provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son, because the son was asking, where's the offering? And the two of them went on together. They reached their destination. Verse 12, um, he's about to sacrifice his son, and, and, and as God told him, and he says, do not lay a hand on the boy, uh, he said, do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. In other words, you've obeyed me. You, I've seen your heart. I know you're with me. I know that, uh, your faith has been tested here. Uh, you're not just talking it, but truly you're living it. You're doing it. Praise the Lord. And watch what follows obedience. Abraham looked up. And there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day on that mountain of the Lord it will be provided. Now watch this. Verse 15. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this, because you've obeyed, because you've trusted me, because, you're not, because you put action to your faith, because you've done this, and now you've come through on the other side. You have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son. I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand of the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. And through your offspring, all nations on the earth will be blessed because you have... highest form of worship we can give God is our obedience. I will bless you because you're not just talking, you're not going through the motions, but you're doing and following the instructions, and because you're doing and obeying the instructions, now I'm going to mess you up for my glory. When you know there's an area in your life that is not right with God and it's going contrary to the word of God. Start, listen, stop asking for people to pray for you and anoint you when you need to repent. Oil and prayer for, okay, I, I pray that God will, you know, break through. Pray for blessing. Pray for, pray for new. No, no, you need to repent. And start doing what God told you to do the right way. I'm going to say that again. This is a word. We're coming asking for oil. Pray. Bless me. 
but we're going back home and living like the devil. It's hard for God to bless. When we're, not mis- when we're mishandling his finances, we need to repent and start doing it his way. It's hard for God to bless our future and our assignment when we come to church, Lord, worship, pray, pray what? You're going back home and you're sleeping with somebody you're not married with. Jesus let me just I finish with this was it Isaiah chapter 1 right man this thing I, I, I don't know but I know many of you did but I did I went back and read this over and over oh 
Okay. Look at somebody. Okay. Okay, we're going to be all right here. Hold on. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. Okay. brother said on Tuesday, and I believe it's all my heart. No fear of God in the church today. Someday, if we don't got it right with him, he's not coming with the friend stick closer to the brother and grace and mercy he's coming as judge yes he is and he is not mocked even today We're getting together in the house of the Lord. And you got people in front of children kissing each other. They're not here. And good thing I didn't care. I tell you, you know, we had everything worked out. They ended up moving on their own. But good thing I didn't know that at that moment. Are you kidding me? What, 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 what? So don't tell me. Because someone might say, well, Pat, come on. Just Don't tell me everything. No, it's not. Things are not the way they used to be. I said things are not the way they used to be. And we need to start to understand that. And it's time to wake up. And it starts to make a stand and start living right. And it might not be the most popular thing. But it probably saves somebody someday in the future. They might get upset with you now, but they'll thank you in heaven later. Instead of compromising your faith so you can be liked by everybody. Okay, watch this. Someone's here for the first time thinking, oh my, no, what kind of dog? <laughs> Praise the Lord. We love you. God loves you. It's going to be all right. Praise the Lord. Hear, O oh, heavens, verse 1. Chapter 1, Isaiah. Hear, O heavens, listen, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I, re I reared children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows his master, the donkey owner's manager. But Israel does not know. My people do not understand. O sinful nation. Now, it, this, this is America today. O people loaded with guilt, a brood of evil doer, doer, doers. Children given to corruption. They have forsaken the Lord. They have spurned the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on Him. Why should you be beaten anymore? Why do you pers persist in rebellion? Your whole head is injured. Your whole heart afflicted. For the sole of your foot to the top of your head, there's no soundness. Only wounds and wells, welts and open sores, not cleansed or bandaged or soothed with oil. Your country is desolate. Your cities burn with fire. Your fields are being stripped by foreigners. Right before you, laid waste as when overthrown by strangers. The daughter of Zion is left like a, sh a shelter in a vineyard, like a hut in the field of melons, like a city under siege. Unless the Lord Almighty had had left us some survivors, he would have become like we would have become like Sodom, and we would have become like Gomorrah. Watch this. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. The multitude of your sacrifices are they not? Are they to me? says the Lord, I have more than enough of your burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fatted animals. I have no pleasures in your blood of bulls and lambs and goats. In other words, you know what? I'm tired of all the religious exercise. I, 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 it's great that you know the songs. I bring a sacrifice of praise. Is that the way it goes? How does it go? How does that go? Into the house of the he says, 
Hold on to that sacrifice. Take that sacrifice. Keep it to yourself and start obeying my word. Do you see what I'm saying? That's what we're doing. Everything's all, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. We bring a sacrifice of praise into the house. Yo, 11. That was, that was, that was the craps table. Amen. <laughs> Blackjack. Amen. We'll go to 21. Amen. <laughs> Never mind. I'm sorry. That was a little. That was... <laughs> there was a couple I pray. <laughs> We bring a sacrifice. And then, do you hear what I'm saying? There's a couple that understand what I just said right now. In the blood of the bulls and the lambs and the goats, when you come to appear before me, who have asked this of you? Who has asked of this of you? This trampling of my courts. Stop bringing me meaningless offerings. In other words, I'm tired of it. Your incense, your detestable, they're detestable to me. New moon, Sabbath, and convocations. I cannot bear your evil assemblies, your new moon festivals, and your appointed feasts. My soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of. This is God speaking. Like he says, you know what? I'm tired. Of it. Something's got to give now. You've been in this for quite a bit now. How long are you going to keep on looking down? How long are you going to keep that bitterness? How long are you going to keep that unforgiveness? How long are you going to keep on God? How long are you going to keep on living the way you're living? How long are you going to keep on? How long are you going to keep on living again? How long are you going to keep on fornicating? How long? How, how long is this going to go on? How how long? How long? When you spread out your hands in prayer. I will hide my, because some of you are saying, I was saying some stuff. It's in the, it's in the Bible, what I just said. You we come up for prayer, and what is he saying? Don't, don't do it. Nothing's going to happen. B because there's only one thing he's waiting for. Watch this. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Even if you offer many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Watch this. He says, wash and make yourself clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right and seek justice. Encourage the oppressed. Defend the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you, watch this, if you are willing not to get offended by this word today. If you are willing not to get offended today. And say, oh my goodness, I can't believe he's pre what is he? Who does he think? What, what, I mean, hey, I'm just the delivery, but I'm giving you the scripture. If you're willing, if you are willing, and what? Oh, isn't that something how it all comes together? What are we talking about here today? Obedience. That's how we're going to touch the heart of God. If you are willing, and what? If you are willing, and what? Then you will eat the best from the land. Look at this. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. In other words, time to make a choice. If you obey, I'm going to bless you. There's increase. Great days are ahead. Not going to be easy, but those great things are going to come. But if you choose not to, it's not going to be good. So hold on to your prayers. Hold on to everything else that you're coming for, uh, blessings and oil and all this other stuff that you want. He says, repent. Get it right. 
clean it up. And if you clean it up and you're willing, I'll forgive you. I'll wash you. His grace is here right now still at this moment to get it right. So then you can go forth and receive the blessings of God. But God ain't going to bless rebellion. God ain't going to bless you sitting in front of the TV watching pornography. I'm not making, I'm not telling you, listen, we all go through stuff. All I'm saying is there's an answer to get out, though. I'm not looking down at something and saying, oh, my God, I can't believe. We go through stuff. Everyone's got their thing. All I'm saying is God is saying if you're going to follow me, there's an answer. We start with repentance, and then I'll give you the power to get out of that thing if you really want it. But to say it's okay and come in here with, we bring sacrifice of prayer. And then we go and open up the magazine. No. Husbands. When you get off of work, we bring, no, hold on a second. Hold on to that song for a second. We bring sat. Well, don't don't be coming with that on Sunday, when you got a family, you got kids, and you're getting off of work, and you're going out with your buddies, drinking your Bud Light at the neighborhood bar, and so well, I just need to unwind. No, you, if you want to unwind, get around the men of God in the church. And if you want to unwind, your friend ain't those guys at work, and your buddies in the bar. Your friend is your wife. That's why you got married. Now man up in the name of Jesus. I said man up and buck up, amen. It's called commitment, praise the Lord. Well, it's tough and it's not easy. Well, that's called life. Tired of, you know, like, oh, stop, stop, buck up. Come in here all bad and all tough and all that stuff. And they oh, but it's so tough and is that. It's called life. It's called responsibility. Some things that I like to do sometimes, but I can't do because now I have responsibilities here in this church that demand me to be accountable and over. So I can't do some of the things that may, not bad things, but I just can't because now I need to be, it's called, I'm not 18 years old. I'm a pastor of a church, not over just a church, but ministries. It's called responsibility. Not easy. I don't jump out of bed all the time. Oh. Sometimes it's just the right thing that needs to be done. I don't feel like it that day, but it's the right thing. And for husbands, and I'm speaking, God is speaking to somebody in here. I know when God's speaking to somebody. Start being a husband. Because if you're willing, and you cry out to God, God will help you, teach you. Start being a dad to your children. Maybe you haven't started strong, but you still have an opportunity to finish strong. Don't be a bum with your children, amen? Be a man and be a father. Don't come in this place. I bring a sacrifice. Pastor, pray for me so God can help me with my job and some other. Man, go home and be a father first. Go home and be, 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 a, be a husband first. When it's Friday and it's time to go home and you finished work, go to the store, get some flowers for your wife, not Bud Light, and go to the bar. Get some flowers, and all the women said, Amen. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Praise I know all the women are coming back next week. Amen. They're like, This is it. <laughs> I found it. Some of them are here for the first time. They're thinking, Man, I found church. This is my home right here. Preach it, Pastor. Amen.
you got to put some you got to put some work in it but she's not responding well maybe if you got her some flowers and start to show her a little more attention maybe she'll respond a little differently you know what i'm saying don't wait for you you make the move and i'm gonna flip it now to the women amen you know take care of your man praise the lord do you understand what i'm saying you hear what i'm saying on the flip side well he's this and he's that all right well hold on a second then uh, when he gets home you know praise god when you're at home and stuff like that well, you know do something special for him amen <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> you know Get, get like, get like, get like, you know what I mean? You're been working all week long, and praise the Lord. When he gets home, opens up the door, there's flowers on the ground. <laughs> Big old sign that says, You are the greatest. Table set, big old T-bone steak. When you go to get something, it's like, no, 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 you go sit right where you're at. I got it, honey. I'll take care of that. I know you've been working hard. You just sit right down. Let, let, let me take care of you. Could someone say Amen. Because you, you hear what I'm saying, amen? I'm not going to sit here and say I know it, but I, I know that, that that's real right there, amen? That can be easy, but it takes work. Any relationship takes work. This ministry and all the relationships in this ministry, heaven, we've all, we have to persevere through some stuff to get to where we're at. If we just stuck, if I did it just all my way and never, you know how many people here have been with me for a long, Cheryl, how long? Cheryl, how long you been with me? Ten and a half years. Robert, we've, been, we've known each other from 1994. Do you, know, do you understand? There's people. My cousin, when I got saved, was one of the first people that started coming to church with me. I, when she felt sorry for him, she's like, poor thing, probably. He's like, oh, I've been, <laughs> <somebody just laughs> she's probably, I think she felt sorry for him when she first started. Amen. Praise the Lord. And she started coming. But God works in mysterious ways because she's never left. Amen. She's right in. Amen. But the point I'm saying is there's a lot of people. Veronica, you've been with us from Jason when he was a little baby, when, you first, when he was born in our living room. What I'm saying is, it's, it's, it, 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 we've had to communicate. We've had to work through things. That, that there's been some challenges. But because we, we were all, the one thing that brought us all together to continue to push forward and get us to where we're at, the word and the cause. And he became our meteor to finalize certain things and to bring us back together and to work through some stuff. Same thing in a relationship and in a marriage. If you're going to, if, 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 if there's got to be, he has to be in the middle of it. He's got to be number one. And there's got to be some sacrifice and submitting to one another and, 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 some, and some work. It takes work. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Are you glad you came today? Yeah. Right. I wasn't. Wow. I just had to obey the Lord. Like I said, I was going to talk about something. I just, I just felt that thing rise up, and I had to be obedient just to get right into it. Amen? But I'm going to say this as a pastor, and I know there's certain things that I need to. There's things in this church, and I'm speaking to the church right now, in our church, that need to be cleaned up. Some of you are thinking, how do you know that? I'm telling you right now, the spirit of living, I know in this church, there's stuff that needs to be cleaned up. And God is saying, my grace is here now. It's under grace where there doesn't have to be consequences if you are willing. But if you're not and you continue, there'll be consequences in the future. I'm not even going to have an altar call. for it. This is something that you need to go home. When you're going home by yourself, between you and the Lord. If you are willing, God will forgive you, wash you. And if you are willing to say, Lord, now help me to do it the right way, 
then you'll start seeing the blessings of God hit your house and your family and your life. Amen? Yeah. Lift up your hands and say, I receive it. I receive it. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise God. Okay, let me do this. We need to take the offering, and then we're going to dismiss. Um, 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 Stephanos, uh, our, our friend from Greece, he's leaving this what, Friday. Friday he goes to Greece. So uh, 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 how many people would like to hear him do a song before he, tonight? All right. So let me do this before he does a song. He's going to sing a song, and then we'll, we'll dismiss. And I know the game starts at 2 o'clock. Settle down for you Cardinals fans. Amen. I got gotcha. you. Look at somebody say, Pastor's got you covered. Amen. 2 o'clock start time. Big game, Indianapolis Colts, amen, Colts and Cardinals today, amen, but first go to Jesus, amen, and just, and then, and then enjoy the ball game, amen, praise the Lord, if you need an offering envelope, please raise your hand, we'll get one out to you as quickly as possible, you guys, thank you for your faithfulness, there should be an offering envelope in front of you, if you don't have one, just lift up your hand, there should be one in the seat pocket in front of you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your trust. Praise God. So, Chris, you're good on Saturday, right? Saturday to preach? Okay. So this Saturday, um, Chris and Julia, you know, the youth have their, their, their youth service, but they're going to come in, and I'm going to have them do the service here. They're going to handle the service here on Saturday night, and we'll have the kids in here, and, and, and I'm going to let you lead it. You guys lead it. Testimony so we can hear from the teenagers what God has done, what God is doing. It's going to be It's your night. It's going to be your night. Pastor Robert will lead worship and all that stuff. And then when you guys will give it over to you guys, and then you just go ahead, you share a word, you, you share some testimonies, and you know, just as the Lord leads and minister to the people, amen. Minister to the parent, minister to our church, amen. Amen. I want all the teenagers on Saturday. I want you guys not I want you guys to come early and I want you guys up in the front. I want you guys front front seats, amen. I, I want you guys to be up in the front. Praise the Lord. I want you guys to be up here and bring that fire and spread it to everybody and start spreading it to everybody that you guys got the last couple days, amen. Praise the Lord. So Saturday, 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 um, uh, uh, Saturday night. Um, I'll be back here tomorrow, Tuesday. We'll be back here Tuesday night. Uh, by grace of God, I'm going to try to finish this thing on Tuesday. I won't be an hour and a half. Amen. Was I was about an hour right now. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, 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 Thursday, Thanksgiving, we're here. So, so, so again. Come join us. We're going to come. We're going to bust in uh, the homeless. We're going we're gonna to bless them. We're going to, you know, love on them. Um, and then that starts at 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock if you want to come and help. But at the same time, if you want to come also and join and, and, and enjoy food also, there's plenty of food for everybody. So we can serve. We can fellowship. We can eat. Uh, it starts at 12. We'll probably go to about 2 or 3 o'clock. Some of you already have plans for later in the afternoon. I want to encourage you, still stop by. Come hang out, have some turkey, be a blessing, encourage somebody, eat some turkey, and then go where you're going and eat again. Amen. Amen. I know some, I've heard many are going to do that. They're going to come by, they're going to hang out a little bit, and then they're going to go somewhere else, but they're still going to stop in. So everybody's, if you haven't made plans, well, praise the Lord. Join the family of God here, and uh, at 12 o'clock, we're going to have, we're, we're going to be breaking bread. So we're going to, okay, so Ken, we're going to start at 12. Is that when we're going to officially start? And, what, and once again, what do we have besides turkey? Little olives and pickles? Eggnog? How about that big, huh? Right about that big. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And more. Because he's got, there's, the, the, there's a lot of people bringing stuff also and some side dishes and stuff like that. Apple pie, brownies, pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie, whipped cream. Kalamata olives. See, I'm calling out some stuff right now. Yeah, praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Feta cheese. What is it? Birthdays. What about birthday? Oh, it's your. Oh, you're saying it's your birthday on Thursday. Ken, we got a birthday on Thursday. Do something. Fix it. Okay, right. Done. 
Do we have anything else? Anniversaries? Any? On Thursday. Now everyone's going to start lifting up. Why not? Whose, bir whose birthday is it today? Pray. Who, who's dad? Shout it out. He turned 30 today. Stand to your feet. Happy birthday. All right. Amen? Okay. Okay, praise the Lord. Um, 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 praise God. Isaac, can you come play for the offering, please? Praise God. Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you for the word that you gave us, Lord. Lord, help each and everyone over here who has taken the word, Lord, that they may be able to perform the word, Lord, that in their lives, Lord that the relationships may be corrected and, and lives may be corrected and it may all bring glory to you, Lord, now that we are about to uh, offer you whatever you have blessed us with, Lord. It's just a token of love that we want to give it back to you, Lord, that your kingdom may flourish throughout the world, Lord. You are doing amazing things amongst us and we are thankful for that. And in the days to come, we pray that you do abundantly amongst us, Lord. Yes, Lord, bless each and everyone who is pouring in and bless each and everyone who is unable to do it today, Lord, that in the days to come they may be able to do it for your kingdom glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So don't forget Thursday. We'll be gathering together here on Thursday. We do have Tuesday service, okay? So we'll be back here on Tuesday night also at 7 o'clock. I'm going to finish this, 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 this series here that I'm in. And, um, and, um, and again, please remain seated as we take the offering, unless it's an emergency. Um, and that's um, um, Stephanos. Why don't you come as we take the offering and uh, and and bless us with this song? Amen. So give our brother, and he is. I know some of you, a lot of you guys are asking for some of his CDs. Okay, so um, Jan, it's your brother that's going to be coming from Greece, and he's going to have his brother's coming from Greece here. When is he coming from Greece? Okay, December 18th, and he's going to be bringing. So Yanni's brother is going to be bringing some of his CDs over. And we're going to have them available for everybody, okay? So praise God So um, as far as that goes. Amen? Amen. Give him a hand.
Come on, give him big God bless you. Amen. God's raising him up. God's raising him up. Pulled him out of the nightclubs. Delivered him from addiction. And now singing for God. He's reaching. He's gonna, and God's going to raise. And is raising him up to reach many in Greece. He's going to be reaching many in Greece to pull him out for the glory of God. Now watch me now. We do have the class, the Get Connected. If you recently gave your heart to Jesus and um, um, or you want to um, um, find out more about the church and how to get involved in the ministry, it's right after service. So if that's you today, just find a, a seat here in the front, and we'll start in about 10 minutes after we clear out the sanctuary. So 10 minutes. So if that's you, we are going to have the class here in 10 minutes. I'll be teaching that class in 10 minutes. Remember, it's not the way you start. It's the way you finish. This was not a message of condemnation. It was a, it was a message of love. God's grace and God's mercy because God wants to take us higher and further. Do you believe it? Shall I receive it? God bless you and we'll see you next service. Amen.